Hi everybody, it's Emily from DIYM. So I'm gonna take this unadorned, undecorated hand and turn it into this. So if you wanna make your own tattoos and either sell them or give them away to people, great trick-or-treating idea, stay tuned. <laughs> Today, we are basically going to make tattoos and stickers. Really excited about that. Most people know how to make stickers, I think. It's pretty straightforward and easy. So I just figured I'd do something a little bit different. I did show how to make stickers a little bit in this video as well. Also, the nice thing about this is basically you can make the stickers and tattoos really, really easily with the exact same size of sheet of paper, same format, and just cut them out to the exact same size. And it gives you more options too, in case somebody comes trick-or-treating to your house and the parents are just like, uh, I don't want to give my kid a tattoo. You're just like, okay, well here, here's a sticker. This is a really cool idea I think for people who have a talent for drawing or are artists or illustrators in some way should form. I'm an illustrator in case you guys didn't know. I've done some illustrating in the past and I used to actually make comic books and web comics and things like that a long long time ago <laughs> before I started doing more textile stuff than even just this channel. I kind of wanted to sort of showcase some of the sort of stuff that I can do I guess a little bit in this video. I've done better art in the past but I kind of like how this art sort of turned out. Yeah I think it turned out really really fun. So these are the stickers that I made. Then I made these tattoos. They're a little bit shinier, but very similar to the stickers. Very, very similar size and everything like that. So yeah, I don't know. I really think that this is so cute. You can see a bit of the shine on the tattoo and I just think it's just absolutely adorable. I kind of want to try it all of them. I love the cat. I love the skull and how that turned out. Just so stylized. It's so simple, but it's so stylized. I just like love how that turned out, but I love the cat too. The cat is just so cute. And then I love the pumpkin one too. I just think it's adorable. And again, it looks like almost like Pac-Man eyes in a way. I'd probably put him like right here or something. <laughs> but yeah, I just think that they're so, so cute. And I can't stop looking at it. I think it's really adorable. It's really, really fun. And it just sort of brings me back. It's like nostalgic, right? It brings me back to finding cereal box prizes. Yeah, this is just really, really fun. In case you kind of want to go back to those nostalgic times, if you're just trying out a tattoo for the first time. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's just a lot of fun. I really hope that you guys like this. Be sure to like and subscribe and share the video with anybody who's into this type of thing. I made the tattoos with Procreate. So I drew like a pumpkin and a cat, a spider and a skull. And I kind of tried to do it in sort of like a retro style, um, something simplistic and retro that kids might hopefully like and hopefully their parents will kind of be a little bit nostalgic when they see it. That was kind of what I was going for with it. I mean, I don't know if it comes off. I'm hoping it does. But it sort of like has, it's like a retro sort of style, but it has a bit of a modern twist to it. They're very abstract, a lot of these drawings that I did. But yeah, I did them really, really quickly in Procreate. I just thought they were really fun. I probably did them in about, I'd say 20 minutes tops each drawing more or less depending okay so that's enough chatter you want to get into the diy right so let's do that on to the diy so i've got two different types of printer paper here you can use whatever you want it doesn't have to be this particular tattoo paper or the sticker paper if you want to you can even get some sort of textile printer paper so for printing on totes or t-shirts if you wanted to make larger images if you want to make t-shirts and stuff like that there is a way obviously to do that right now we're focusing on the tattoo paper and the sticker project paper it's pretty straightforward it's the same sort of thing with the sticker paper you basically print it, cut it, apply it on whatever surface, right? The only thing is with the tattoo paper, you have to apply it on skin. So I'm just going to focus on the tattoo paper right now because this is something that I find people don't use enough. Like more people make stickers and things like that on the internet. So this is kind of like a new thing to a lot of people. So this is clear or transparent tattoo paper. I'm sure you can get white if you wanted a white border or if you had say eyeballs or something. So basically like your printer doesn't print up white normally, right? So sometimes you'd have to get printer paper that has white so you could do say eyeballs or something like that so this is like a lip and tape bag i'm just gonna open it here oh this is not a very good quality lip and tape 
great, but I, oh no. I thought that I was going to be easily opening it, so I guess I've destroyed this bag. Okay, so there's instructions right here. You can download thousands of great designs for your next project with the Silhouette Design Store. So this is for somebody who basically uses a Silhouette machine, or I'm sure you could use some sort of other print and cut system. I'm just gonna use a regular printer and I'm hoping that that's gonna work out for me. It says printed instructions inside. So this is what I wanted to film, because you need printed instructions for this. This is kind of what you need to do for when you're applying the tattoo. So this is step number seven here. So take the cut out tattoo, peel away the clear plastic layer, exposing the adhesive, apply the tattoo adhesive side to your skin and cover with a wet cloth for 10 to 15 seconds or until paper backing slides off easily. So these are instructions that need to be printed separately. If you're going to be giving this stuff away to kids for trick or treating or in goodie bags or whatever capacity you're gonna give away for you'd have to say something about how to apply it so I'm going to make like a little printout with these instructions on it so that anybody kid adult whoever is receiving the tattoos anybody knows exactly what to do in order to put it on and so it says temporary tattoos generally last a day and can be removed with a washcloth so they're not long-lasting so we're gonna try all this stuff out in this video so here I did a test print of either the stickers or the tattoos, whatever you decide to make to hand out. I feel like it's important to do a test print. Some people don't do test prints and that's perfectly fine too, but I feel it's important to do a test print mainly because sometimes I don't know if my ink is going to be acting up. Obviously it was acting up a little bit here, but that's not a big deal. It wasn't right on the image. This is like areas that I'm going to cut off anyways. So there's a little bit too much ink here. I don't know why that happened. I don't know if you need to clean the heads, but yeah, you definitely check and see if you need to clean the heads of your printer before you start getting going with this. I just fairly recently cleaned the heads, so it's not too bad. But when I was photoshopping things, I tried to make a two inch square in Photoshop. And then I basically did like a plus sign, made it a little bit gray and put it in the corners basically of the image. So I know where to cut. So this could be showing, you could cut that off fully if you want to, it doesn't really matter too much. I just wanted to make this about the size of two inches or so. So each of the images are almost two inches, not quite. You can make them smaller, you can make them larger depending on what you want to hand out if you want to hand out big stickers or small stickers but I think two inches is a fairly good size for tattoos or stickers it's a pretty decent size I think so I skipped over a lot of the instructions. Each tattoo paper instructions are going to be different depending on what brand you get. I'm going to try to link them down below if possible. In case you get the same brand that I get, I'm just going to read this to you guys just before you start or before you purchase it. So it says open the desired image in Silhouette Studio. If you have a Silhouette, whatever, that's fine. If you don't, I'm going to try to print it and see if that works out. Open the desired image in the Silhouette Studio software and mirror it so the image is reversed. Before printing, verify registration marks are visible and then feed your tattoo paper into the printer so it will print on the glossy side. Use the printer's photo paper settings if available. So that's actually really interesting and really important. If your printer has a photo paper setting, try to use that because it's going to be for glossy paper. When the ink is dry, apply the adhesive sheet to the top of the printed image by peeling away the green backing on one end, aligning it with the end of the printed tattoo paper and then peeling away the rest of the backing while smoothing the adhesive down onto the paper. Use a scraper tool to rub the adhesive sheet onto the printed image. Load the printer sheet into the Silhouette electronic cutting tool. The optic scanner will read the registration marks and cut around the edge of the image. So you don't have to do this necessarily. If you want to, you can cut it out by hand if you don't have a Silhouette or some sort of print and cut system. In the Silhouette Studio cut settings panel, select temporary tattoo paper and adjust the blade settings as indicated. So, and then it's basically stuff we want to print out, which is to whoever the heck you're gifting to, right? This is just like how to apply the tattoo to somebody. But yeah, I just thought that that was important to tell you guys how it's done. So you're aware before you purchase this paper or before you even use this paper. So I made basically the exact same size instructions as these tattoos so that they can fit right behind the tattoo. If you want to put them in a little two inch, three inch lip and tape bag or something like that to hand out. But basically you just sort of cut these down where the X's are. So I'm going to just show you how to do that right 
right now. But I basically just put the really important information, so like just cutting around the tattoo image, so the person who you're gifting to will probably end up fussy cutting everything out, unless you want to do it for them, that's up to you. So you can leave that part out if that's the case. But cut around the tattoo, leaving a small border around it, peel away the clear plastic exposing the adhesive, apply adhesive side down to the skin, cover with wet cloth, hold for 10 to 15 seconds or until backing begins to slide off easily. So it's basically the same sort of stuff that was said. I might have tweaked it slightly just to suit this small individual instruction manual. And then I put the instructions on how to take it off. So it says tattoos can generally last a day and can be removed easily with a washcloth. This is my own personal thing that I've noticed in case this is hard to remove with just a washcloth. I put if you wish for quicker removal, baby oil and olive oil can work well to remove too. So that's normally like if you have a really tough tattoo, this is just sort of like extra information on that as well. Anyway, so I'm going to, I'm going to do this with the actual tattoo as well. I like to use this little Fiskars cutter. I'm going to cut off the border mainly first to make sure that's kind of all lined up. And you can cut this however you want. You can cut it with scissors, do an exacto knife and ruler method. Sometimes this sort of thing, if you've got it, can be a little bit faster. Just trying to line it up as much as I can with this border. And then just sort of cutting off that little border there. So everything will hopefully be the size that you need when you are putting your tattoo bundle together. It's not perfect, but whatever, that's fine. It's not a big deal if this border shows. This is just throwaway instructions for whoever's using the tattoo. I try to line things up so that right here and here, so that that's in the middle. So yeah, you can cut this stuff off if you want to, it's not a big deal. Or you can make it lighter, or you don't even have to do it at all. I just find that this is easier just to make everything the right size, to have these little marks here. So there you go, you've got one instruction thing here, and you can just keep going really easily. So yeah, so they'll pretty much all be the same size. You know, and then you can just sort of put this in the back of your little tattoos that you just made. So I just made all of these and this is going to be the tricky part. So so you're supposed to print on whatever your printer is, it's supposed to print shiny side up. Try to do that and again, try to put it on like a photo setting if that's available for your program that you're using. So I just printed out the tattoos. I think they look really good. I actually put it on a saturation setting on my printer, which I didn't even know existed. I couldn't find a photo setting, but I feel like this is really good because it sort of made things quite nice. And as you can see, quite saturated in comparison to the original test sheet. This is the test sheet here. So it looks a little bit duller with the colors, but not too much. It's not too bad. Okay, so I'm just basically going to let that dry before I apply the next step. Just make sure that the ink is completely dry because that's what you're supposed to do with this process. While this guy dries, I'm just going to basically put the sticker paper in the printer and just make some stickers in the same way. So here's the sticker paper here. I'm just going to pop this in the printer. So this is the sticker paper. It's like a matte sticker paper. So this is still drying, but in comparison to the tattoo paper, it's a lot lighter as well. I find you can use a shiny sticker paper if you wanted to, if you wanted to make things shinier. I find that a lot of the time when I print, I think it depends on your printer and your ink and all that sort of stuff, but when I print on shiny sticker paper, the ink sort of smudges off. So what you could potentially do for making stickers is you could do like a matte sticker paper and then if you really wanted to make it waterproof, you can laminate over top of it like what we're going to be doing with this once this dries, but basically laminate over top of it with some sort of laminating process, basically just like a, a laminating sticker paper. That's an option. And then you can cut it, fussy cut around it to make like a border or use like a silhouette machine to like do like a more perfect border whatever you want or you can do what I'm doing and just cutting things out people can fussy cut it out if they want to later so there's a whole bunch of different methods that you could use for something like this so I cut out the stickers as you saw in the sheets there's about four types and five of the images per row so I've got about five stickers and I'm gonna get like five tattoos of each of the designs that I made if you want to make like a ton of these for kids you might want to get quite a few packs 
packs. The sticker paper normally comes in packs of more than the tattoo paper. The tattoo paper is quite expensive for two sheets, so make sure that you do some test prints before you actually do the tattoo paper. I cut off the little markings that we made over here. I didn't really care too much if it showed up on the instructions. I wasn't too concerned with that. I did cut them off of the sticker. And again, you can cut around things, like fussy cut around things, make a little bit of a border so that people can just peel it off and stick it on something and it just looks like one of those kind of stickers. But I just did this. I think it looks kind of professional, all straight like this. But yeah, you can do whatever you'd like. So I'm gonna put these stickers fully aside here. So basically, I'm going to use this to line up on this white part here. Peel this back, tear this green part off, and then what you're supposed to do, or try to do anyways, once everything, like all the ink is dry, just try to line it up as best as you can with your sheet of paper like that. It's kind of like a clear flap now. And you might want to get something like a scraper. I'm going to use a credit card of some kind. I'm just using my Optimum card for this particular process. You can do whatever you want, whatever card or squeegee thing you have. But yeah, this is what I'm going to use. So I just figure this part's really important because it's a little bit tricky. Basically, you start peeling this away. And what I like to do is take my card Try to go like that basically, but like sort of smooth things down as much as possible. So there's no air bubbles basically. You're left with this green sheet. You could do whatever you want with it. You can throw it out. You can use it for something else. I don't know what. So then the next step basically is just cutting things down. So here are the finished tattoos and just pair it with the little instruction thing on the back. See how perfectly it fits. And it's just a little bit bigger if anything. And I would say just make like a few of those. If you want to, you can package it with the sticker as well. It might confuse some people as to which is the sticker, which is the tattoo. Tattoo. So I would actually say maybe separate these things and actually label if it's a sticker or a tattoo on the packaging. According to the directions, you have to sort of fussy cut a little bit around the tattoo. It just makes it a little easier to peel back, I think, when you do this sort of step. I'm just going to give the image a lot of space, basically. I'm not going to cut right up close next to the actual image itself. And you can do it a little bit better than me if you want. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to judge my work because it's not like you're going to see it because it's very clear. I tried to use like a light gray and hope that that's going to show up on my skin so that printed up. It's not a white basically so you can do white if you want as well. So anyways, I'm gonna cut that out like that and then I'm going to show you the next steps when I apply this thing. Okay so I'm gonna try to hopefully do this well for you guys. We'll see. So I have my spider tattoo here. I'm just going to follow the directions on this tattoo application piece of paper. I've already cut around it and and apparently to apply it, you have to peel away the clear plastic. So now it's like some sort of adhesive on here. Okay, so I'm just going to toss that out. I'm going to take this hand and stick it on here. So like that. Now it doesn't say if it's supposed to be warm water or not, but I'm just going to get damp cloth. Okay, so everything's all nice and wet. Now I'm just going to put this on here. It says to put it on here for 10 to 15 seconds or until things start to slide off. So one Mississippi, two Mississippi, 14 Mississippi, 15 Mississippi. Okay, so let's see. It's sliding out already. Oh wow, it worked really well. And look, not even on here anymore. So there we go. I've got a little spider on my hand. How cute is that? Basically, that's that. So I did this after I filmed most of this video. So I kind of have my tattoo on, so don't be alarmed. It's not just like a giant spider on my hand or anything. I just wanted to show you guys how I ended up doing the packaging for this. And you don't have to do this. You can definitely just do something very simple. Maybe make like a sticker or something like that and just stick it on the back, tape things down and whatnot. But I'm just going to show you how to do this bag topper thing that I did. And I thought this was really fun and really cute. So basically, I made a page very similar to the size. Actually, it is the exact same size. They're supposed to be two inch squares. It's the exact same size as these tattoos and stickers. Basically, I just cut them out and instead of having plus signs, I actually made this part of the decoration here. As you can see here, there's like little flowers right here. The little heart-shaped flowers, basically. And they're on both sides of the packaging. So it sort of created a perfect line 
line to cut and it turned out really really great so basically I'll just show you how I did this I'm gonna put this aside so I have these guys all cut out here I used tape and some staples right here so I guess it depends on what you're doing so I'll just do the tattoo one first because that one's a little bit more complicated sticker one you just don't add like a little instruction thing because most people know how to use stickers so I'm just gonna take one of the kitty ones here and I bought this so this is three by five inch clear resealable bags there's 200 in here so you can make like a ton of these if you wanted to or you can save this for something else you could probably put some little candy or something like that in here they're lip and tape bags so as I told you guys before in other past videos lip and tape Tape is basically tape and like a lip, right? I'm going to take a bag, take the instructions. I'm just going to put the cat over the instructions and try to figure out. So I'm going to slip this in. I'm just going to sort of slip that down and then put the cat as much as I can to the side like that. And then I turn it around because that's where this tape is. Just take this tape off and it's sometimes very staticky. <laughs> Ah, there we go. That's the kind of annoying part about bagging these guys up. I'm gonna leave some space up top, but just sort of put that on the bottom there, like that. I just sort of like to crease the top a little bit and then fold over the side and just sort of, again, crease that. So it's kind of like a little rectangle like that. Then I take some cello tape, whatever you have on hand, that's really good for you. And I just sort of seal that part up. The toppers go right on top here. So I'm doing a temporary tattoo. So folding things together. Sometimes it's not always perfect. That's okay. And then I just sort of put it over top of the bag. And then I like to come in from this angle, try to avoid the flower design. And then I just staple one side. You can do one staple too, it doesn't matter. I like to even it out here. It's a little more sealed. I staple the other side. And there you go. You now have a tattoo or sticker depending on what you decide to make. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So here are the stickers and the tattoos all packaged up. And they're just individual here. And then I made little sticker in tattoo packs. So it will have all four designs. And it's basically just putting them in the same sort of lip and tape bag. It's a simple way if you just wanted to gift a few different designs, you can definitely do something like that. Yeah, I think they turned out really, really cute and they look pretty professional. So if you wanted to sell these, you could definitely do that too if you don't feel like giving them away, whatever you decide to do. So many different possibilities with these tattoos and stickers. Hey guys, in case you guys are interested in how this tattoo is holding up, it looked pretty good for a few days actually. So this is about was it, two or three days later. It's a little bit sticky, not too much. I guess it's just the adhesive sort of coming through and it's sort of peeling up just a little bit too, as you can see here. So I figured I'd show you guys, you can do this with a washcloth, I think. But I just wanted to show you how easy it is to just take some olive oil. You can take any kind of olive oil too. It doesn't really have to be this particular brand, but you can just take a little bit of olive oil or again, baby oil if you've got that available as well. And I'm just going to take a little paper or towel, just put a little bit of olive oil on, it doesn't have to be a lot. And then it just comes off pretty easily, it just peels off basically. Try not to get this in your olive oil. But it normally doesn't take much time to get this off. It just takes maybe a few minutes, just a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of elbow grease. And then I'm just going to wash my hands basically. It's a little bit red because I was a little bit rough with it because I was trying to get it off pretty quickly, but honestly it doesn't hurt or anything. And I'm a big baby when it comes to <laughs> pain, so I would tell you if it hurt for sure. So I'm just going to clean this up. There you go, this is nice and clean. Again, you can do that in the sink. Yeah, so now my table is clean and so is my hand. That's pretty good. It takes it off pretty well. So yeah, that's my tattoo video. I really think that they're fun. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this. As you can see above here, I have different colors of pumpkins, which I mean, number one, I love different colors and rainbows and things like that. As you all know, if you've watched my channel for long enough. So I have a teal pumpkin. That actually stands for something. Some people don't know this. Some people do but for the people who don't know what a teal pumpkin stands for if you put a teal pumpkin in your window when kids are trick-or-treating around Halloween it basically
basically states that you have treats that are not necessarily edible. Maybe they're like toys or stickers, tattoos, whatever, or you might even have it alongside candy or some other treats or something, right? Maybe some chips or whatever, if you have some edible stuff. It's just a nice gesture for the kids that might have some sort of food allergy or maybe they can't have certain treats. There's all sorts of different reasons why people won't give their kids stuff for Halloween, like edible things, but the kids want the trick or treat experience. So this could be like a really fun thing to do for kids because a lot of kids like stickers, a lot of kids like tattoos. I mean, adults pretty much like those things too. It's not just limited to kids right? But it's just something fun to do. And if you're an illustrator or artist in some way, this is a great way to showcase your artwork. You don't have to do it as simple as what I did. You can make them a lot more elaborate. Another thing you should probably do, if for some reason you decided to do a design that has words on it in some way, shape, or form, if you've ever made t-shirts and you know that in Photoshop or Illustrator, whatever program you're using, you're supposed to flip over the image so that when you're ironing it on, this is if you're doing a light colored shirt, I know that sometimes dark colored shirts, you don't really have to do this sort of thing. But if you're doing like light colored shirts, you have to sort of flip the image over if it has words and then iron it on the shirt. So it's a very similar method with the tattoos. Basically, your image is going to be reversed. So if you want your image to look a certain way, it doesn't really matter with my drawings I did because I didn't put any words on any of them. But if you wanted to put words on something, be mindful that you're going to need to turn the words around and make a mirror image of it. But that was something that I felt was kind of an important tip for people who want to try this out as well. But if you don't have any words on your stuff, you're good and you don't really care which way your little image goes, then you're good. You don't have to do any of that. So that's perfectly fine. It is a little expensive if you have a lot of kids coming around on Halloween that want like a ton of tattoos. I would say try to package them individually, then hand them out that way. This is also fun to have if you are doing conventions or as an artist or illustrator. So you can make them yourself or you can actually send your image to somebody who makes them professionally as well. So they can do all that work for you. Maybe hopefully package it up for you. I just thought this would be really, really fun thing to give to kids. If you only have like a few kids coming trick-or-treating at your door, if you have a Halloween party happening and you want to kind of give stuff to the kids at the Halloween party, almost like a little goodie bag thing. This doesn't have to be like a Halloween project either. This could be for any time of year. It could be for Christmas, a little thing to just add to a present or like a stocking stuffer. Yeah, there's just all sorts of different things you can basically do with this. You can make little bunnies for Easter, some stuff for Valentine's Day if you're giving away Valentine's or something something, a Valentine tattoo. You could do it any time of year. It doesn't even have to be for a special occasion. You can just, as I said, you can just make them because you want to. So there's some people that also, they want to try out a tattoo that they've made. Maybe they've done some artwork and they just want to see what it looks like on their arm or wherever they want to place it. This is a really, really great way to sort of see if it's going to work for you and see if you just kind of like the tattoo, just sit with it before you sort of make like a snap decision on getting like a tattoo or something, right? One thing I almost forgot to mention in this video was you can take these tattoos and you can turn them into tattoo costumes. If say you're doing a character costume and they have tattoos or a specific scar or something like that, you can make tattoos that match that. And it's nice because these particular ones, they don't last too long. Yeah, you could basically make scars, as I said, or zippers or all sorts of interesting kind of details depending on what you're going to be for Halloween. And I think it's actually a really good alternative to do specific makeup. That's kind of like a really cool thing you can also do. But yeah, anyways, I hope you guys like this video. That's pretty much it. So take care guys. Have a good one. And happy Halloween. Okay. And happy trick-or-treating. Bye.